All right, this is guided practice for mixed numbers word problems. It is not found in your book, but I either pass it out to you or you have printed it off or printed it out online. So I'm wondering, have any of you heard about the two thieves that stole a calendar? Yeah, these two, two thieves stole a calendar. Did, did you hear about that? Yeah, they each got six months. Mm, it's either going to take you six months to get that, or it's going to take you six months to get over it. All right, moving along. So, I like to tell students that when I am solving a word problem, there's four things that I do. And I've also handed this out to you to be able to either put in your book or your folder, or you can actually see it online as well. Four things that I do. I read it for understanding, figure out what is going on in the math problem or the math story, visualize it in your head, and imagine what is happening in the math story. Make a movie of it in your brain. Plan it by writing an equation that helps to solve the problem. And then the last thing, solve it by completing a number sentence that answers the question or completes the task. So I want to do those four things when we're going through this problem. So our first one says Jose has eight and three quarters pounds of bananas and four and two thirds pounds of oranges at his fruit stand. If he sells nine and seven eighths pounds of fruit, how many pounds of fruit does he have remaining? So I've read it. I'm figuring it out. Okay, that that he's got this many pounds, bananas, eight and three fourths, and four and two thirds pounds of oranges, and he sells nine and seven eighths pounds of fruit. And I'm visualizing it in my head, and this guy Jose at a farmer's market maybe, and he's got these two boxes where he has uh, fruit, some of it's bananas, some of it's oranges, and he's selling them. And he ends up selling nine and seven eighths pounds of it. Now, it doesn't tell me if he sold how much uh, bananas he sold or how many oranges it sells, he sold. It just says he sold nine and seven eighths pounds. So I'm thinking, okay, well, then I need to add, add the bananas and oranges and then subtract how much he sold to see how much he has left right so I've got eight and three-fourths minus four and two-thirds or not minus but plus because I need to add them plus four and two-thirds minus nine and seven-eighths and I'm gonna say equals F and I could use any letter or it, uh, symbol that I wanted. I'm just using F for fruit, right? So I'm going to subtract the amount he sold, which is nine and seven eighths, from the amount he had, which is eight and three fourths plus four and two thirds. All right. So I've read it. I've visualized it. I've planned it. Now I'm going to solve it. So we've got eight and three fourths. We're going to add four and two thirds and I'm going to say 12 is going to be our common denominator right because I did four and three so we've got four eight twelve three six nine twelve okay now I've I know that I usually put the four in with the uh, the three or the four in with the four and the three in with the three so I just I start with eight but I know that some teachers start with the the first number there the four and some teachers start with the three even though you have three and four here so I'm going to start doing that for you so anyway we've got twelve as our common our common multiple so 
our least common multiple is going to be our least common denominator. All right, so then I'll do 3 times 4 because 3 times 4 is 12, so 2 times 4 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12, so then 3 times 3 is 9. So then I'm going to have 12 and 17 twelfths, which equals 12 plus 1, 1, and 5 twelfths, which equals, I'm going to put that over here, put this way over here, 13 and 5 twelfths. All right, so the answer to this is 13 and 5 twelfths. So I'm going to take 13 and 5 twelfths and subtract 9 and 7 eighths. All right, go ahead and get this work down if you don't have it down yet, because I'm going to erase it to give myself room. All right, so we've got 13 and 5 twelfths minus 9 and 7 eighths. Getting messy there, Mr. Pangburn. Nine and seven eighths. Well, if I go down here, 12 and 24, well, I know that eight can go into 24 because I know my math facts. Oh, it's about 12 there. Eight, 16, 24. All right, so I have 24 as the least common multiple, which makes it the least common denominator. And so 8 times 3 is 24, so 7 times 3 is 21. 12 times 2 is 24, so 5 times 2 is 10. Well, can't subtract 21 from 10 and it'd be a positive number. So I'm going to borrow, which means I'm going to Take away 1, add the bottom to the top, right, keep the bottom. So now I have 12 and 34, 34, so now I've got enough. So now I've got 13 over 24, and now I've got... Three. Three and thirteen twenty fourth. Well three and thirteen twenty fourths what? Three pounds. So L B S. That's for pounds. So I've got my thirteen and five twelfths. That was the uh, the total of these two. Then I subtracted my 9 and 7 eighths to get 13 and 3, I'm sorry, 3 and 13 24ths pounds. Okay? So what I would like you to do, this next one is not as complicated, but what I would like you to do is do those four things. Read it, visualize it, plan it, and then solve it. All right? Do that, and then we'll come back and go, go over it. All right, so go ahead and do those four things, and then we'll go over it. All right, so during a blizzard, it snowed 10 and 1 seventh inches. After a week, the sun had melted 8 and 3 fourths inches of snow. How many inches of snow is left? Well, let's see this. We had 10 and 1 seventh. 10 and 1 seventh inches of snow, right? So I'm, I'm reading it, I'm imagining it, I'm visualizing it snowing, then the sun comes out and melts it. It wants to know how much snow is left. Well, if I'm thinking about it and I see snow melting, that means the snow is going away, right? So when I'm, it melts, it goes away, it subtracts it. Okay, well that would mean 
that I've got 10 and 1 7th sorry 10 and 1 7th minus 8 and 3 14 I would say equals s for the snow remaining all right so I'm gonna go ahead and solve it well if I'm getting a least common multiple I got 7 because 7 14 oh there we go and I also know that 7 can go into 14 right there it is we've got the least common multiple of 14 so that means 14 is also the least common denominator 7 times 2 is 14 so 1 times 2 is 2 and this is going to remain the same well can't take 3 from 2 and it be a positive number so I'm going to borrow borrow 1 add the bottom to the top all right that remains the same 16 minus 3 is 13 9 minus 8 is 1 1 and 3 fourths or 13 fourteenths inches that's how much of it remained all right I want you to go ahead and do number three as well do number three and then we'll go over it all right so an empty bulldozer weighed seven and one ninth tons if it scooped up four and two thirds tons of dirt what would be the combined weight of the bulldozer and the dirt so I've read it for understanding I know this bulldozer weighed this much it scooped up this much and it wants to know the combined weight all right the combined weight of the bulldozer and the dirt well if I'm thinking that I'm visualizing it this bulldozer right it uh, it's empty and then it comes and scoops up this dirt right so now it's not no longer empty it's got dirt in it and this question is asking what is the total what is the total of both the dirt and the bulldozer so if I was doing that I would be adding and I'm gonna say seven and one ninth plus four and two-thirds equals B for the bulldozer I guess you could say W for weight but really you can say any letter because that letter just represents the combined weight all right so if I have nine I've got 9, 18, 27, I've got 3, I've got 3, 6, 9, look at that. I can also know that 3 goes into 9, right? And again, if you can do this part in your head, that's all good. That's all good. You can't just, you just can't do this part in your head where you do the 3 times 3 equals 9 and 2 times 3 equals 6 don't want you see don't want to see you doing this part in your head okay I want to make sure that you are showing your work on this so that I can see what you've done if you if you've done it incorrectly I can correct your mistake all right so we're adding right well we don't need to rename anything don't need to borrow that is uh, and we've already actually renamed the four and six ninths, so let's just add it. We got seven ninths, eleven and seven ninths. Well, the seven is less than nine, so we've got our answer. All right, so we read it, we visualized it, we planned it, we solved it. All right. Go ahead. And solve number four as well this one's a bit more complicated so you'll need to spend a little more time on it but go ahead and solve it and we'll come back and go over it all right a carpenter has a large box of nails that weighs eight and five eighths pounds and a small box of nails that weighs four and three fourths pounds if he uses nine and five six pounds of nails how many pounds of nails does he have left all right so he's got this large box that weighs 
eight and five eighths pounds. He's got a small box that weighs four and three fourths pounds, and he uses nine and not and five six pounds. How many pounds does he have left? So if I'm visualizing, this guy has two boxes of nails. One's a big box. One's about half the size of the uh, the big box. All right. So he's got all these nails, and then it says if he used this much. How much is he going to have left? Well, then I think I'm going to be adding the large box to the small box. Oops, not three eighths, it's three fourths. And then I'm going to be subtracting the amount of nails he used. And I'm going to say N for nails. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and solve that and see what I get. All right, so I'm going to erase this and then I'm going to come back and solve it. So eight and five eighths plus four and three fourths. All right, so I know that four can go into eight twice. So I know that eight is going to be our common denominator. See, four can go into eight. That's what I'm doing in my head, and that's what you can do in your head as well. However, I'm still going to rewrite it. I'm still going to do four times two, three times two, because four times two is eight, so three times two is six. I'm still showing that I'm multiplying the top and bottom by the same number. All right, so now I'm going to add 12 and 11 eighths. Well, that's going to be 12 plus 1 and 3 eighths, which is going to be 13 and 3 eighths. All right, 13 and 3 eighths. So then I'm going to take 13 and 3 eighths and subtract 9 and 5 6. So I'm going to erase this as well. So I have more room. 13 and 3 eighths subtracted or subtracting 9 and 5 6. Well, I'm thinking that the common denominator is going to be 24 because 8, 16, 24. 6, 12, 18, 24. Now, I already knew this, but I wanted to show it for your benefit, for those of you who still need to do this. And if you still need to do that, that's fine and dandy, but do it if you need to do it. Okay, don't just guess at it. Make sure that you know it. But if you know that 8 goes into 24 and 6 goes into 24, if 24 can be divided by both 8 and 6, Go ahead and do that in your head, but you still need to rewrite it and show the work. 8 times 3 is 24, so 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 4 is 24, so 5 times 4 is 20. Right? Oh! Not enough to subtract. I need to borrow. Subtract 1 at the bottom to the top. Alright, so 33 minus 20 is 13 20 fourths. 12 minus 9 is 3. 3 and 13 20 fourths, what is that going to be? Pounds. 3 and 13 20 fourths pounds. I'm going to put LBS down here, really, really small there. Alright. Okay, that's our last one. You all have a good day.